Thank you both for your testimony and for your service. Um, it's often said, uh, this, I'll direct this to General Abizade, it's often said that, you know, Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. It's said over and over and over again. I think it's often forgotten, though, that I would say Saudi Arabia is the largest state sponsor of radical Islam. They act in somewhat different ways. Iran is very much a regional player, and they're involved anywhere there are Shia populations, and they're very much involved in several theaters, mostly within the Middle East. Saudi Arabia's uh, malign influence, though, is worldwide. Most of the extremists that we've seen have been Sunni extremists. The Saudis fund tens of thousands of madrasas, including tens of thousands just within Pakistan. It is said that uh, people trained in these madrasas cross the border and actually attack our soldiers and have killed our soldiers in Afghanistan. And so when I hear people say, oh, they're getting better, they're letting you know, women drive, uh, part of me thinks, well, maybe that's a public relations stunt to let women drive while we imprison the activists at the same time. At the same time they're letting women drive, they're sending a team of thugs with a bone saw to chop somebody up in another country, a writer and a resident of our country. So I don't think we should be fooled. But I do think in the larger context of things, the reason I bring up sort of Iran and Saudi Arabia is it reminds me somewhat of the Cold War where anybody that sided with us, we turned a blind eye to, to human rights violations. So there were dictators throughout Africa, Mobutu, Mugabe, who did horrific things to their people. And we just looked away, they said, well, they're our guy. You know, they're on our side against the Soviet Union. So we've divided up the Middle East. Iran's the largest state sponsor, and we never say a thing about Saudi Arabia. We're starting to because of this horrific murder. But I think we turned a blind eye because of oil, because they tend to side with us against Iran. And I just think there needs to be a more even-handed look at this. I'm not saying that Iran is good, but maybe both are malign actors. Also, when we look at the Middle East, I think there needs to be someone saying, you know, we, we talk about a Middle East peace process, and we're, you know, it's all been about the Palestinians and Israel. I think that's an important question, maybe a, a, an imponderable one. But I do think that really the big peace process would be someday somebody recognizing that it would be having Saudi Arabia at the same table with Iran if you really want to solve most of the Middle East process. So I guess my question to you is, Given all of that, do you think we need to make a stronger statement about uh, the St Saudis instead of just saying they're getting better, saying, well, you know, perhaps we need to restrict the arms sales until they quit funding madrasas. Instead of saying, please quit funding madrasas, maybe they should have to quit funding madrasas. We should play hardball with our weapons and say that people that you know, imprison people and give people a thousand lashes and all the things the Saudis do, maybe they don't deserve our weapons. General Abbasid. Thank you, Senator Paul. I, I already indicated that I think extremism is a curse of the Middle East and it's extremism on the Sunni side and it's extremism on the Shia side. And, and really sectarianism is the twin curse of the Middle East and we have to move very, very hard to convince the good people in the region to abandon forms of extremism. But when I think of extremism in Saudi Arabia or extremism in any other Arab country, there are elements within the population that believe that if they fund extremist preachers, if they fund extremist ideologies, if they fund jihadis to move to the sound of the guns wherever the current battle might be that they are doing God's work and it is clearly not God's work so we have to keep saying it it doesn't matter whether it comes from Saudi Arabia or Egypt or the UAE or Yemen we've got to keep saying it we got to keep working against it I will not shy away from that I, I have that. told them that for years and I will continue to tell them that. But on the other hand, I would also like to respectfully say they have made progress. I remember having an opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia recently where I saw some very innovative and very effective programs uh, aimed specifically at reducing terrorism, both financially and on the field of battle. I appreciate that. Am Ambassador Tuller, uh President Trump has often said that the greatest geopolitical blunder of the last 20 years was the Iraq war. What is your opinion on that? 
Well, sir, I, I think that uh, the removal of a leader like Saddam Hussein from the region in the long term serves the interests of the United States and stability. Do you disagree region. with the president? I don't think the president, uh, um, uh, I, I can't take his remarks. Well, his his point was that re removing Hussein created a vacuum, created endless war over there, and also empowered Iran. It's empowered many of those forces of sectarianism and extremism, which, but I think which, in the which long term. Which goes back to uh, Senator Kane's point, are they an ally? Some would argue Iraq is now more of an ally of Iran than they are of the U.S. But uh, the president disagrees with you. The president thinks the Iraq war was a big mistake, emboldened Iran, and we shouldn't have done it. 